Hey guys, Shane here from A-Main and today we're going to be covering, an covering another tech talk here today with charging. Now, of course we've done battery basics, we're going to be charging today and of course we're going to be doing a couple more videos next week. I'm going to be doing some setup tips for your Surface videos, so do look out for that in your instalment. We're going to be releasing these from now on on Tuesday, so it's going to be a tech talk Tuesday and it'll be ready for you beginning of the day each Tuesday for you guys to watch. So of course we've already covered batteries and basics, how to understand batteries. Today we're going to be covering chargers, chargers and basics. And as you can see over here, I have our ProTech 610 quad charger and I'm going to be using that for our demonstration today. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to be charging a battery, of course. We're going to be charging a LiPo battery in this particular case. It'll be a three cell. I'll show you how to set all of that. We're using our ProTech charger. And also to charge, we're going to be needing a couple of other things also. So we're going to be using a balance charge adapter today, right over there. And I'll cover as to why we balance charge. And then, of course, you just need a charge lead as well. Most common errors will be covered in this video today include um, correct charging methods as well as correctly balance charging your LiPo battery. All right, so let's get started over here. Let me grab my power adapter. Let's bring that all the way around this side of the charger over here. There we go. First thing we want to check before we even plug in the power cable. Number one, your charger is going to be in the off position. You never want to be turning your charger on when it's in the on position. Just bad for the power supply. You don't want to do that. Also make sure some, some um, chargers have got a voltage um, regulator over there or a voltage change. For example, this one can do 210 volts or it can do 220 volts. For 220, you just pull this across. For, two, for 110, you pull it over. Of course, incorrect voltage is going to cause a failure. So make sure that you do check that voltage first. I've already checked. Mine's on 210 volts here in the USA. That's the right voltage so I'm good to plug in. There's only one way that the charge cord can, uh, the power cord can plug in over there. So let's go ahead and make sure that that is off like I told you all to do. Plug it in and let's go ahead and power up our charger. All right, so right over here, as you can see, I'm just going to bring them all back to the home screen over here, home screen, home screen, and home screen. Keep in mind with this charger over here, this is in fact four chargers all in one. So I want you to note that whenever you're changing settings over here, it doesn't change it for the other three banks. And if you change settings here, it doesn't change it for the other three banks and vice versa, always the case. So do make sure any settings that you change in the user settings menu, if you want them to apply on all of your banks, make sure that you do apply them specifically and individually. And we do that so that it's easier for you to use. For example, I love drones, so I have some four cell batteries that I have set up um, by standard on this side of my charger, and by standard I have all my surface items charging on this side, so all the correct settings have been set over here, all the correct settings over here. Now that's a little bit more in depth with the settings guys, but today we'll just be covering the basics. So let's talk about balance charging, charging, and how batteries work. So over here, as we can see, this is a three cell 11.1 volt battery. It is a 2200 milliamp hours. We've got two leads coming out to the top of the battery. The first is gonna be our anode and our cathode, which is just literally our charge and discharge lead as seen over here. And in this case, we've got a Dean's connector or a red connector, also known as a T style adapter. As you can see, it forms a T if you draw those lines. So that's just one of the many, many, many adapters that battery can have. It doesn't change how we charge it. We're just using that particular adapter. On the other side, we have what is called a balance adapter and it's normally a little white. Some sometimes black adapter like this over here. And you can see it's gonna have for a three cell battery, you will have three red wires and one black one. And what that is, it's one wire per cell and one um, end wire that's gonna be able to come back from the back of the battery. A three cell will have three of these red wires and one black one. A four cell will have four red wires and one black one and so on and so on and so on. So of course, as you can tell, because the number of wires is gonna change, the little adapter on the end of this battery is gonna change as well. Which brings me to our next little bit of our equipment over here, which is a balance board. Why do we need a balance board? Well, like I mentioned over here, you can see that's a two cell, three cell, four cell, five cell and six cell setup and each one's going to have a different size adapter. And the reason why we use this right over here, as you can see in our charger, our charger has that predetermined set over there, which is exactly what our balance board looks like. And I think it's a six cell. So I think a six cell would be able to plug directly in there. It is indeed. So if you wanted to plug in a six cell directly, you can. But if you want to plug in a five cell, you've got to use a balance adapter Four, three, two, the same thing over there. All right, so let's go ahead and connect up our balance adapter now. So let's just go ahead and like I'm, I'm going to show you this way over here so you can see in the charger. I'm going to be using that port over there. So let's go ahead and we'll just plug this in. There's only one way forward to plug in. So with a little clip on the top. Let's go ahead and connect that over there. Balance adapter lays down. All right. Next up, I like as good practice always to connect my two leads to my charger first for the simple reason being 
that if you go ahead and if you, um, as you can see, I'm used to doing it. I like to hold my terminals away from one another. Let's say I just hold these two little terminals together. I connect the battery up and these two touch over here. You're going to cause your battery to arc. You might shock yourself. It's not good for the battery. So if you're going to do it, I always just grab it like this and shove my leads in. As you can see, that keeps them separate. But as just safe charging and good charging practice, just go ahead over here. As you can see, the black one goes to the black one and the red one goes to the red one. That way you never have your wires touch one another. These lies these leads are not live right now so nothing can happen to them so nothing's happening right now anyway so now we're ready to plug in our battery and as you can tell this is one of the most common errors that I get when people balance charges often that they do not connect this particular little wire over here I know it seems very simple but as you can see there's three red wires and one black one so a lot of people think that that serves as the red and the black wire over here in fact it does not it's a little bit different and I'll show you how that works in just a second so let's connect up our battery over here as you can see, that just connects directly in there. Of course, your charge lead is going to have to match your battery. So, of course, if you don't have the right charge lead, you're going to want to get one with the right adapter or connector over there. And then this one being a three cell is just going to go, as you can see, again, it only plugs in one way around. So there's no way to mess it up. And there we go. Our battery is now connected and ready to start charging. Okay, before we start charging though, I just want to cover how battery, um, how battery balance charging works because you can charge a battery just using normal LiPo charge mode. That essentially just forces a charge in through the anode and the cathode cable, these charge wires over here, and goes directly into the battery without the use of the balance cord and you can do it just like that. Now the reason why we would want to use a balance board is that not every cell is going to charge at the same efficiency. Um, some are going to have more resistance than others and for that reason you want to balance out your voltage per cell. And the reason why this is so important is that as temperature increases or decreases, voltage also correlates and increases or decreases. So if you have a very hot day with a fully charged battery, the chances of you damaging that battery are rather high because the voltage increases as the temperature increases and if you have an overvolted battery, it's very easy for that battery to become damaged. The same vice versa for a completely discharged battery, where if it becomes a very cold day, that battery may discharge or the voltage may mimic the um, temperature and also correlate downwards thus dehydrating and damaging the cells also. So you always want to make sure that you keep your batteries in a properly stored LiPo storage mode, which I'll cover in just a second as well, um, and that you should preferably always charge using the LiPo balance charger um, method, which I'm going to show you now. In most cases, this is going to be better for you because, like I mentioned, those cells do charge at different rates, and you want each one of your cells, this being a three cell, so there's one, two, and three cells, you don't want one to be very full and one depleted and one medium. Because then as we charge and charge and this one becomes fully charged and these ones stop, maybe they're too low or too high. And the same thing can happen as we see with temperature then of course that so will damage your battery over the long period of using them. What balanced charging will do is each one of those cells that are now incorrectly vaulted, they will actually be balanced out and they will all charge identically and discharge identically at the same rate also. And that's why this little adapter over here, that's what that allows us to do. So let's go ahead and plug that in and I'm going to bring the charger over here for you guys so we can see exactly how it is that we charge. All right guys, so as we can see over here, I've only plugged in my battery on this top channel over here and we're going to get charging now. So um, we're going to go ahead, we are only using channel 2. So remember if I go over here and change any settings in, in channel 4 or channel 3 or channel 1, nothing happens here. It doesn't affect anything. So make sure you always pay attention to the channel that you've plugged into. It's pretty easy to see in this case. And most chargers, if you have a one port output, it's, you, know, you really can't miss it because it's only got one LCD screen in that case. So let's check over here. We're on channel 2 right now. Battery type, we're going to be charging a LiPo battery. What if we were not charging a LiPo battery? Lithium ferrite battery we can charge, lithium high voltage battery we can charge, nickel metal hydride battery we can charge, NiCAD battery we can charge, PB is a lead battery so that's what's in your car sometimes you can charge, and then digital power you don't need to worry about, memory save, memory load, and user set. We're going to be covering a couple of settings over here in user set in just a minute. But before we do, let's go through balance charging. So let's go again, LiPo battery, so that's where we want to be, and a couple of different things that you can do. The first thing that pops up is LiPo balance charge, and as you can see over here, there's no pre um, preset um, information over there. We're going to come back to this in just a second as to how to set that correctly. LiPo balance charge works like I explained to you. Um, LiPo charge is going to work, but just without the balance board. And then of course over here we can also see um, LiPo discharge which is just going to discharge your battery to a predetermined voltage as well as LiPo storage which is going to put it into the correct storage mode which will be 
um, not a fully charged battery, not a fully depleted battery. It will be battery that's right in the middle so that it's, if temperature increases or decreases, the battery won't get damaged through, um, through those changes. So of course that if you want to, this is the way to keep your batteries in the safe manner to put them at the correct voltage if you're not going to use them for an extended period of time, which would be any period of time more than a day or two that you wouldn't be using your battery. So use that lipo, lipo storage mode. Okay, so balance charging, pretty simply put. Just press start over here. We can see it's set now for 2S. This is a 3S battery. So we're going to set it to 3S. We press start. This is a 2200 milliamp hour battery. So we're going to go ahead and increase that. And as you notice over here, I'm increasing this, but this is increasing as well. And for safe charging practices, most battery manufacturers are going to conform to this. They say that for every 100 milliamp hours, you increase your charge rate by 0.1 of an amp. So very easily put, the calculation is milliamp hours divided by 1,000 equals a safe charging rate. So 5,000, you can charge at 5 amps. A 4,000, you can ch charge at 4 amps, and et cetera, et cetera. Pretty easy to put. Now, you can charge some batteries quicker or slower according to the battery manufacturer's um, um, safety specifications on their batteries. Some batteries are better than others, but this is just a safe charging practice somewhere that you can feel safe that you can start charging. All right, so now we press start. We can push more voltage into it if we want to. In this case, of course, it's not safe charging practice, so we won't, and we're just gonna leave it right there. And now to get it to start, you'll see if I press start, it'll just keep cycling through the information. But to get it to start, you just gotta press and hold start. We'll do a battery check. Let me show you what it looks like if I told it that it's a four cell. Oh. Cell connect error. One of the cells isn't connected. So that's telling me maybe that there's a bad battery if I had a, a fourth cell connected. What if I go with two cell? Ooh, high voltage. So there's something wrong with the battery. So the battery um, voltage checker over here, and it also has a polarity checker. When you're charging, it'll actually check your polarity if it's the wrong way around. So you don't need to worry. But of course, as we covered with your ESCs, in the last um, video, you want to make sure that when you plug your ESCs in, you always go red to red and black to black, because otherwise you will see smoke and you won't be a happy camper. So in this case, of course, it is a three cell battery. Let me change that over there and we're ready to charge now. So battery check. It's happy. We can confirm to start charging and we do. Now, one thing over here, guys, that I want you to note is whenever charging a LiPo battery, you want to be using a LiPo safe bag. In this case, of course, I'm in a safe facility. I'm not using a LiPo safe bag, so I'm just charging my battery out in the open so you guys can see it over there. So do use a LiPo safe bag whenever charging a LiPo. They are extremely volatile um, batteries, so make sure that you don't get stuck with something that causes a fire because LiPos can quickly go up into a fire. All right. So as it's busy charging for those uh, 30 seconds over there, you can see our current charge amperage is 2.2 amps, which is the maximum which we set it to. So this battery is still going to be charging for a little while. 3S, LiPo, 3S, and we are currently at 11.98 volts of total overall um, total overall voltage for the battery. But now I want to check the cells. Most people don't know that you can do this. You just press left or right and you'll see over there you can actually change quite a couple of things. So let's press left. You can see each cell right now as we're balance charging, only when you're balance charging can you see this. Each cell is going to be at a nominal voltage and you'll see that these uh, voltages will increase as this one comes up to 3.99 then these will be able to go over to four and so on and so on. If this one doesn't come up, it'll actually just keep burning that voltage until this one does. So that's what balance charging does, is bring them all up at an equal rate. So that's what that's gonna do for us now. Let's check over here. Okay, that's how you check your cell. If you press left, you can change your end voltage if you want to. I do not recommend changing this, but you can check it there if you want to, to know exactly what your battery is gonna charge to. 12.1. Uh, 12.01 is where we're at, and we're going to be charging to 12.6. Now, what if this is incorrect, and what if it was charging to 13 volts, and somebody said it incorrectly? Where do we set those settings? They're in the user settings, guys. Press over here, back, which essentially this button is also back. That would be forward, and that just scroll through your selection, so that also counts as back. And we're going to keep pressing over here until we see user set, which should be right there. Now, you do want to use your defaults most of the time, but sometimes, as we found with a customer, um, as I did last week, we had a setting over here which was really messing us up a little bit, and I'll show you what it is. You don't want to mess with that one. Um, okay, so let's just go ahead and leave that in there. Oops. Okay, so let's go through. Charge, 
Discharge time, one minute, that's for when you cycle your nickel metal hydride batteries, that's a good default. That's a good default, you can leave those. Um, energy, uh, your heat cutoff, leave that. Um, you do want to be having some sort of a timer. We said four hours is a safe timer there. You can set it for more or less if you want to, but you just want to make sure that your equipment, in case you leave it on, does have a timer to turn itself off, just for safety reasons. Now, this is the one that John and I came across. We'd actually sent the charger back because we thought it was defective. This, in fact, is the charger, which works, as we can see, perfectly. But the problem that we had was his battery was only charging to 3.86 volts per cell and it was a 7200 milliampere um, battery. And as you can see over here, our capacity cutoff was set to 5000 milliamp hours. So that meant that our charger would never allow us to go over and above 5000. If you do have these high capacity batteries, this is where you can change that setting. You can either just turn it off or you can physically change that amount over there. I'm just going to leave it as a default, but I thought that I'd cover that for you guys because that is one of the settings that you want to look at. Also, another setting that you want to be concerned with is going to be this next one over here, which is, okay, that one's just your DC power cutoff. Leave that alone. You can set your own presets there if you like, beeper and buzzer, backlight. This is the other one that you want to be concerned with. For a LiPo battery, your end voltage should be 4.2 volts per cell. And for a lithium high voltage battery, as we can see over here, it's going to be three, uh, excuse me, 4.3 per cell. So it is a slightly higher voltage. Some people are trying to push higher voltages. Some people are trying to push higher amperage. I just want to point out at this moment in time that although a lot of races and a lot of people are able to do these higher voltages and higher amperages, it's not a safe charging technique. And for that reason, we don't recommend it. Some batteries and some chargers are capable of doing it, but I just want you guys to be aware that this is the safe charging practice and how to do all of this. So that really covers the safe charging practice and how to set your battery correctly to charge a LiPo battery, which is our most commonly charged um, battery type and our most commonly used battery type. If you have any questions, if you want to send us an email, if you'd like to give us a call, guys, find us at www.amanhobbies.com. Please do come online there. We've got a chat system. You can also email us from there. And if you're inside of the USA and prefer to talk on the telephone, 1-800-705-2215. Guys, please like, share, comment, any questions down below as well, I'll be happy to answer them. And I'd like to at this point ask any of you that have watched the video till the end, that if you have any ideas for future videos, um, if you'd like to see something or if there's a subject that you'd like for me to cover, please make a comment down below. If I get enough comments about a certain topic or about a page or you know maybe if there's a, it's gonna be something that I'll mention in another video, I can help to cover that for you. And I really wanna be here to help you guys um, get into the hobby and learn all the basics, all right? So guys, again, any questions, any emails, uh, if you want to call us, please go ahead. Any uh, comments, leave them down below. Looking forward to meeting all you guys. We'll see you guys next time for Tech Talk Tuesday. You have a lovely week and see you next Tuesday.